Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for July 5th, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from Anne and Tim Hughes, co-directors of Silver Lake Conference Center. There's a verse in the letter to the Hebrews that has some resonance in the lives of summer camp directors at this time of year, and it goes like this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. It's week one of camp. 150 campers, some here for the first time, some homesick, some exuberant to finally be joining in the fabled experience they've sampled while dropping off their older siblings in Sunday's past, and some returning. The emergency phone has rung four nights out of five, but only one fire alarm going off at 1.30 a.m., thanks to all God's critters, including a really active lunar moth. But here we go. Mostly ready. Sometimes not quite, but somehow... We are certain we cannot possibly get through seven more weeks of this grueling pace. Yet and still, with God's help, your and our own prayers, we can and do. We joyfully proclaim during Secrets of the Kingdom's worship service, it is good. Soon and very soon. And Pastor Diane encouraged us to marvel at the sky, thank God, and be still for at least a moment during the day. We watched our counselors in training burst into a flash mob dance during lunch to Call Me Maybe, and we frosted cakes reflecting our diversity of God's creation, and Diary of a Wimpy Camp Kid made litter box cakes, and there were so many accessories during the hats, scarves, and capes dinner, it out-accessorized our waterfront staff's lost and found fashion show. There was a really amazing race. There were stream hikes. There was a victorious group hike at Bashbish Falls by some who really weren't sure they could do it. We played Quidditch on the soccer field, really hot Quidditch, and there were wizards on broomsticks spotted flying around the high ropes challenge course in the trees. There were sailboats and cookouts and campfires and lots of singing and night hikes. There were scrapes, a few sprained ankles, staff and campers. And there were moments of courage and moments of despair, and just as suddenly in the next, moments of friendship and loyalty and support. All this was experienced in community. Big, riotous, awkward, planned and unplanned community. Then it's over. It's Friday and then Saturday, then parents pick up all those changed kids, kids who have learned the new songs, Fortified with new friends, new thresholds and challenges overcome, new skills learned, and hopefully some glimpses of God right in our midst. We emerge from this week, never again the same. And we turn around to welcome a new group of deans, counselors, chaplain, nurse, and another big, exuberant, unsure yet hopeful and fearful group of conferees. God, O oh God, be with us. Send us your prayers, and wherever you are, remind us of your faith in us, your faith in every one of your children you send to be together in this place, in this moment. This group that somehow will pledge once again, for at least this week, to love God, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. Here we go. Give us this day our daily bread a big dose of stamina, and bless us in this ministry you've graced us to do with your children. Amen. In the news this week, this coming Saturday, the first two busloads full of young people from all over New England will begin making their way to West Lafayette, Indiana, for the National Youth Event at Purdue University. 
These two service buses will stop in Cleveland, Ohio for two days of learning, service, and a special visit to Church House, the UCC national office. United Church News has a great story on the preparation work among the six New England conferences to arrange the transportation and program for this group, which includes two more busloads of young people who will arrive at Purdue on Tuesday. Over 60 people will attend from Connecticut, but among the New England states, it's Rhode Island that is sending the most, 78 youth and advisors. Next week, ConferenceCast will be on the road, coming to you from the National Youth Event in Indiana. I look forward to reporting for you from the midst of a group of young people who are excited about working together to make God's world a better place. Last Thursday, June 28th, the United States Supreme Court handed down its anxiously awaited decision on the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and they upheld the core of the law. Connecticut Universal Healthcare advocates celebrated the victory at a press conference at the Legislative Office Building in Hartford. Speaking on behalf of the Interfaith Fellowship for Universal Healthcare, Imam Kashif Abdul Karim of the Islamic Center of Greater Hartford had this to say. This fight wasn't just about mandates or insurance. It was about what kind of country we wanted to be. A deeply divided, unequal one that gives advantage to the very few at the expense of the many, or a country that cares for all of its people and treats them all as equals. He was echoed by Rabbi Joseph Ron Fish of Norwalk's Congregation Bethel. Rabbi Fish has a son who was treated for a cleft lip as an infant, a minor surgery that became classified as a pre-existing condition. Thanks to the ACA, his son can no longer be denied insurance coverage. I am a big fan of the idea that we as a nation today have articulated the basic idea that we will not allow our children, our adults, our men, our women, we will not allow our people to be without help and hope. We will heal the brokenhearted, and we will bind up the wounds of those who bleed. Further work for healthcare advocates remains, so they met that same evening for one of a series of regional recruitment events. The goal, say organizers, is to double the number of people who will raise the issues of universal health care with state legislators and Governor Malloy as they work to implement the federal and state reform laws. The Conference Minister Search Committee formally began accepting applications and profiles this week, having released the conference profile online at ctucc.org last Thursday. The printed edition includes many links to outside information sources, particularly to a six-minute video which highlights some conference ministries about which people are particularly excited. Here's what Committee Chair Gordon Rankin has to say about what we seek in a new conference minister. Probably the first quality that I would say a new conference minister needs is ability and willingness to relate to local congregations. Uh, our congregations want to feel supported and resourced, but also affirmed and appreciated. This is both a challenging time, but also an exciting time because it's a time that we need to be more attentive to listening to who God wants us to be and more responsive to that. The search committee will accept applications through September 30th. For more information and to find out how to apply, visit ctucc.org slash cmprofile. And you can always find out what's happening around the Connecticut Conference at ctucc.org slash news. The National Youth Event is coming right up soon, July 10th through 13th at Purdue University in Indiana, with service groups leaving this Saturday the 7th. The Craigville Colloquy, featuring William McKinney on The Gospel Unbound in the Mainline Churches, runs July 16th through 20th. United Black Christians hold their 20th convocation here in Hartford, July 25th through 28th. The UCC Musicians Association Conference is July 29th through August 2nd in Burlington, Vermont. And Praxis 21, the Center for Progressive Renewal's National Church Leadership Institute, 
is August 8th through 10th in Decatur, Georgia. And plans are coming together now for the next General Association with Bishop Yvette Flunder as the primary speaker, September 23rd through 25th at Silver Lake. You can always find out what's coming up in the Connecticut Conference by visiting us at ctucc.org slash events. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Ann and Tim Hughes for their reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for conference cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, Basic Support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God. (laughs) 